Hi there, I'm Gina Barrett from Gina B Silkworks and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the V-wrap button. I'm going to show you how to work the plain version first, then we'll move up to how to add colors to make striped versions, and then if you hang on towards the end I'll also show you a slightly different technique so that you can work a soutache version. So let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is mark out eight divisions on my button mold. This isn't necessary, but you may find it easier. So the divisions, I'm marking them at the point. This is our circle gauge. You can use um, compass and dividers and circle paper and all sorts else if you want to mark out. As I said, this is a guide that will help as you're wrapping. I'm going to take the end of my thread, which is a cotton perlay number eight, and I'm going to hold it at the back of the button mold. This particular design can be wrapped in a number of ways. Um, this is the way that works very well with thread, but it's also often seen using soutache. So toward, at the end, I'll show the alternative version using braid. Hold the end of the thread at the back. You can always rub a little bit of beeswax on the back of your button if you need to, just to, um, it'll get a bit tacky and hold the end of the thread. And I'm going to work from bottom to top on one of the marks. And then I'm going to work one to the right and one to the left. Hold the thread at the back, rotate anti-clockwise and do repeat for each of the marks that you have made for your divisions. Now I'm going to change the colors on this so that you can see where the colors sort of appear so which can help you with your design. You'll notice that the um, thread itself is still on the ball. So there we have our foundation cross. I'm just going to cut the thread. If you find it difficult to hold, you could always pop that into um, our third hand, which will help to secure that up. Um, and that's great when you're using lots of different colors as well, so that you can now thread the end onto your needle. And you just need a tapestry needle, really. So we'll unclip that, turn over to the back, and basically just weave that through so that the threads stay put. Okay, so that is your foundation. And most wrapped buttons do start with a foundation of some de description. So now we're going to add a second color. The way that I add the second color, usually, is I'll thread just the end onto a needle and it's still, the thread is still attached to the ball. So I can just weave under. I don't even need to tie a knot trim the tail and we're ready to go. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to, you've got your cross as a cross. If you rotate ever so slightly so that you've got these two V shapes and then fill with wrapped thread. Just gonna move this ball onto my lap so that it doesn't end up crashing to the floor. Now, what you can see is I'm holding the button along the edge. It's really important that you try to get into the habit of holding the button along the edge 
of the button mold when you're doing any wrapping as this will um, stop you from moving your threads around um, incorrectly because if you're holding at the top you can actually shift them so that's the biggest thing that people find that they're they're actually moving their threads because they're holding it along the side or on the top now you can count so that everything gets really really even or you can just work so we're just going to work on this one so i'm now going to rotate anti-clockwise and i'm going to repeat again for this section and i'm just going to fill that space up and also when you're working with your threads it's really important not to try to put too many threads you see there's a, a few little gaps it they're minute and you probably just see them if you try to fill them in and put too many threads onto your button mold, you'll actually get them slipping off and your button will look quite messy. So try to avoid that. It's something that you get used to knowing what is right. So again, I'm just going to secure that up. I've cut the end from the ball and now I'm going to thread my needle. Carefully unclip that, turn it round, and just weave through. To secure that and you can also any threads like this one here that's a little bit off at the back, just pull it in and that helps to secure. Just going to trim that off. And now we're going to go back to the blue so that you can see um, the divisions. And how we actually get the V. So I'm going to add that on in the same way as I did before. Trim that tail so it doesn't irritate me. And I'll pop the spool onto my lap. Now here your wrapping is you need to hold it hold the button mold so that you've got the spaces that are running um, vertically. Take the first wrap from the lower um, right and go up to the center top so that it the left hand so top but at the center of it. And let's put two wraps. Uh, now three wraps just so that you can see this more clearly what's happening now the next one you need to carefully bring your thread over to the bottom left far side and wrap up to the top right inside so we'll do another three and then we're going to come down and we're going to repeat from right bottom right to left and then we're going to go top right, bottom left to top right. And you just continue to do that. Now at this point, you probably will need to hold your button mold like so because you need the space. But because you've already secured the other wraps, that's not a problem. It's really when you're rotating a lot. Just to fill that space, we're going to do one more to finish that off. And you should be able to see that V down the center. So I'll trim that off. Thread my needle.
and that's the first of your V-wrap. Now you can obviously change the colors as you go, which brings this up as a far more um, distinct wrap. One of the ways to do that is to leave spaces. So I'll just set up and we can get some, um, I'll show you what I mean. Okay, I've set this all up in a single color. And what I've done is I've started the wraps, but I've left a gap. The gap being about the size of a single piece of thread. Okay, so then I will continue to wrap just as before, but this time leave spaces. Now this is at first quite a complex way of adding a second color. However, if you are someone who feels that you, it's a little too fiddly to work with two colors at the same time, this is a really good option. Okay, now I think that there'll be just a little gap there, so I'll finish that off with the blue. You can also see the possibilities for more design when you're looking at it like that, um, which is how you can come up with all sorts of crisscross and woven patterns. So I'll just secure this at the back. and add a lighter color. Now this time I do need to cut the thread from the ball because you're going to actually be weaving. So I've threaded a needle, tie a little knot at one end, trim off the tail so it doesn't get in my way. And secure that at the back of the button. You don't necessarily need to have a knot at the back, but I find that sometimes I pull it too tightly. And then we're going to start and we're going to fill in the space. Now you could come up with all sorts of different patterns by weaving in a different direction. But if you simply needle weave following the line of the threads either side of the gap that you left... And work them in the same order you will get them falling in the correct way to make your stripes The secret is to actually watch how the wraps are falling um, in the first instance. And you'll get your overlays just right then. Last one coming round and there you are and if you want to just add for good measure one more of the light color either side to fill the gap and then again secure at the back. It's really helpful if you, when you're securing is to bring those together at the back that have gone up and down because that will stop threads from slipping at the front. And then a little knot. And trim. So there's one way of achieving a striped look. Um, and as I say, you can actually work different weaving doing that method. Um, and of course, the last method is working with two at the same time. So I shall get that set up. 
Okay, so this one I've wrapped most of the foundation in the pink, the foundation cross in the pink, and the first two wraps in the pink. I've then added the blue to the back of the button. Both are still on the balls. So let's see, shall we start with the blue? So then I'm going to work just as before with one color. Then I'm going to hold it down in my hand and come up and work the second color. This obviously will give you far more control in the long run for the addition of the color and the placement of the color. And in actual fact, when you're practiced, will make it easier. You just keep swapping them out. What you have to do though, is you have to make sure that your hand holding your button is holding that thread taut. Otherwise it will be quite loose um, on your V wrap or arrowhead. So just wrapping and exchanging the threads. It's just slipped a little, so I'll use my nail to just bring it up, get into position. I think we might be able to get one more, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut the blue now, just so that it's not pulling on that ball because of, we're at the end and I don't want too much of a tangle. And going to go through for the last pink that I want on there. That's it, and then I can cut the pink, turn it round, thread my needle. You can, if you're really clever, thread them both into the same needle. Um, but, you know, you don't need to do that. <laughs> Just double check at the front that you're happy with how everything is lying. And then once you've done one, chances are the other color will be um, somewhat secured anyways by your stitching. So you can let go then. You don't have to be so conscious about how you've held it. And the nice V wrap um, worked with the colors at the same time. So as you can see, you can get quite a few different um, looks. It's all a really nice button worked in a single color um, because the light hits it, especially with working with silk. And of course, any of your sections um, here, these could also be striped. So, you know, that that gives a lot of opportunities without even getting into weaving. If you like this video, do please subscribe, click the um, little uh, bell icon to get notified when I upload more, click like, that all helps out the channel. And now I'm going to show you a little bonus and that's how to slightly adapt it so that you can work with Sutash braid, a very traditional way of use working this design. Right, for the Sutash button, I have marked off in the same way and I have taped the end of the soutache to the back of the button. I've just used a bit of masking tape, not a problem. And the reason for this is because soutache is so slippery and it's just easier to start out securing it. It's also a good idea to have a needle 
um, thread it up with some thread, tie a knot in the end, ready. Because again, soutache is slippery. The easiest way to deal with it is to stitch it in place. So just as before, going to wrap from bottom to top along the marks that you've made. Rotate slightly, repeat, rotate slightly, and repeat again. We're not going to do the last spoke. We're on, we only want six spokes, okay? I'm gonna turn over to the back, take that needle and thread, and secure this soutache in place. I'm also going to now leave the needle and thread on. So now I'm going to rotate so that the big spaces are um, moving along uh, vertically, lined up vertically, and going to wrap. So straight up and down, move my needle and thread out of the way. And each time, because you're using a flat braid, make sure that that braid is lying flat. You don't want it twisted. Preferably not to be twisted on the back either, uh, just for a neater button. One more, just to even it. and then turn over and secure that because it is not going to hold very well at all. It does need securing and most braids will. It's because they're so wide in comparison to the uh, area of the button. And is, if you go through and look at vintage um, examples, they will also have stitching. So it's not like you're you're cheating in any way. Now, I'm going to turn it round and I'm going to work the V in exactly the same way as before. So, looking up to the corner. Actually, I'm going to change the color. I just remembered that this is a slightly shorter piece than I wanted. So, to change the color, just secure that up, make sure it's sorted. Yeah, the second color, this will also make it look pretty as well. And I'm gonna secure that to the back as well. And traditionally, if you're, you see a soutache version of these, it, is in one color and in actual fact mostly black um, many many soutache vintage soutache uh, buttons are black but of course that wouldn't turn out very nicely um, on film and um, we can be bright and cheerful these days as well so we're going to wrap diagonally and come across this side. Make sure with the soutache that you are wrapping quite tightly because again, back to it being a slippery um, product and wider, it has a tendency to want to go all over the place. Now I quite like, even though that is even, I quite like adding a little bit of extra so that it overlaps at the bottom and fills up the space. Um, I think that that works quite nicely for a soutache button. So and we'll turn it around. Of course, the, the options are entirely up to you. Um, you can, in actual fact, um, for all of the buttons, even the work the foundation wraps slightly off so that you have more space or overlap the V wrap so that you have a wider V. 
but with Soutash, make sure that everything is well secured, especially those areas where you have gone over another layer. Let's trim that off. I'm just going to take that back up to here to knot it. And then the V-wrap with the soutash. And as I said, it's very effective if you're using a single color as well. It's quite a nice, subtle um, design. So thanks very much for watching. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. Please click like, leave comments, and I would really love it if you would subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so that you can get notified when I upload another video. It would really help the channel a lot. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.